let's take a look at a couple of examples. Here is somebody who goes outside and does see that on this particular day at local noon the sun is directly overhead. That makes the angle of the sun 90 degrees. So we have the sun angle at local noon as 90 degrees. Then we need to know what the sun's declination is. So you need to know what day this is. Let's assume that this measurement is being taken on March 20th, the equinox. Well, for that one, you shouldn't even need the analemma. The declination of the sun at an equinox is 0 degrees. Therefore, 90 degrees minus 90 degrees, the sun angle, plus 0 degrees, the sun's declination, is equal to 0 degrees. And that means this person must be standing on the equator. They're, they have a latitude of 0 degrees. And that should make sense to you. You can kind of verify that the equation worked. If the sun is directly overhead at local noon, and it is on one of the equinoxes, in this case it's March 20th, so it's an equinox, if it's an equinox and you see the sun directly overhead, you must be at the equator. So our equation works. What about this one? Here we went outside at local noon and found there was a 45 degree angle between the horizon and the sun. So we found that with our protractor, 45 degrees. Let's assume that we're making this measurement on June 21st, the northern solstice. Well, you also shouldn't need an analemma for this. What is the declination of the sun on the northern solstice? It's 23.5 degrees north. Therefore, all we have to do is enter those numbers into our very simple equation here. 90 degrees minus 45 degrees, the sun angle here at astronomical noon, plus 23.5 degrees because the declination of the sun is 23.5 degrees north, and that equals 68.5 degrees. That's a positive value, so this person must be standing at 68.5 degrees north. Here is another example where we're trying to calculate our latitude on December 21st, the southern solstice. We find that at astronomical noon we have a sun angle of 52 degrees and therefore 90 degrees minus 52 degrees minus 23.5 degrees. Notice that because the declination of the sun is 23.5 degrees south, I'm using a negative value for the declination of the sun, negative 23.5 degrees south, equals a positive value, 14.5 degrees. Therefore, this person is standing at 14.5 degrees north. Here is an example where the sun is very low in the sky. Let's say we went outside on November 15th at the astronomical noon and found that there was only a 15 degree angle between the horizon and the sun. We look up November 15th on our analemma and find out that the declination of the sun is 18.5 degrees south. Therefore, 90 minus 15 degrees minus 18.5 degrees south equals 56.5 degrees. That's a positive value, so it's north. This person must be standing at 56.5 degrees north. And if you think about that, think about November 15th. On November 15th, the sun is definitely shining in the southern hemisphere. Its most direct rays are definitely shining on the southern hemisphere. And if this person is seeing the sun so low in the sky at noon, it must mean that the sun is shining in the southern hemisphere most directly. So this checks out. The sun is low in the sky, therefore he's in a higher northern latitude. How about this one? One more. Let's say that you go outside on November 21st at astronomical noon and find out that there is an 80 degree angle between the horizon and the sun. So your sun angle is 80 degrees. You look up November 21st and find out the declination of the sun is 20 degrees south. Therefore, 90 minus 80 minus 20 is equal to negative 10. Okay, look here, I got a negative value for my latitude. When you get a negative value for the latitude, then you're in the southern hemisphere. So it's very similar to the way that you add a negative value if, if you have a southern declination of the sun. Well, if you get a negative value back, then you must be standing in the southern hemisphere. So this person must be standing at 10 degrees south. Well, all right, well now we can determine latitude. This has been done for thousands of years. And so this is a fantastically simple way to determine how far north or south of the equator you are on any day. All right, so that was latitude. 
We now are getting further into being able to determine our position. We need to know how far north or south we are of the equator. And so using the procedure that we just uh, went over, you'll be able to determine your latitude on the planet. But that's only half of the story. It's not enough just to know north and south. We also need to know east and west. So not only do we need to talk about latitude, we need to talk about longitude as well. And the longitude is going to allow us to measure east and west. As it happens, the determination of longitude has been a much more difficult problem uh, than determination of latitude historically. So we just went over the fact that even the ancient Greeks had methodologies for determining latitude. Well, precise and particularly uh, robust ways of determining longitude isn't something that came until much, much later. So what we want to do now is talk about the determination of longitude and how that can be done and how that came about historically.